We are talking about protein this week, the protein myth. This is often talked about when it comes to plant-based. You're laughing. I'm sure that this is pretty much all you talk right. about, right? Yeah. The number one question, right. obviously, where do you get your protein? So Exactly. So you're giving all these interviews to all these different outlets, and I was like, I'm feeling left out, and I'm only two floors <laughs> down. I'm going to I'm gonna pull him downstairs to talk about this. Yeah. So uh, let, let's start with this. I always like to start from the 50,000-foot view sure. and then kind of work our way down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, protein, we hear about it, we think that it builds muscles, but really, what is protein? So protein is a very, very important part of um, uh, our bodies, really. Um, our muscle cells, our muscles are made out of protein, you know, our connective tissue is made out of protein, we have enzymes, we have antibodies, all of which are fundamentally made from protein. And what proteins are, are they're strings of amino acids. Um, which get strung together uh, to create the specific proteins that we need, uh, depending on, you know, if we need to repair tissue. And there's a, kind of a normal wear and tear in our bodies that when we break down protein and, and, and we have to re repair that, if you will, by the protein that we ingest in our food. Uh, and, and how exactly does the body break it down? Well, so what, when we ingest protein in our food, we don't actually absorb the protein. Okay. What, what we do is, as I, as I said, proteins are made up of strings of amino acids. And there's some amino acids that um, um, our bodies can't make. Right. And those are called essential amino acids. We have to get those from our foods. There's some amino acids, however, that our bodies are capable of making. So when we consume dietary protein, th that protein is broken apart in our intestine into the component amino acids, and those amino acids are absorbed into our bodies, with, and then they're reassembled to create the, the very specific proteins that we need. Um, and it, you know, if we, we can, again, make some of those amino acids, but the essential amino acids in particular, we have to get from a dietary source. Now, you mentioned amino acids. That is a perfect segue to my next question. You get all the amino acids that you need in one shot. It's called a complete protein. So. More scientifically, what is the complete protein? Well, so I think that this is one of the places where the train comes off the track oftentimes. Okay. There's this kind of mythology. We, we, you know, meat, and beef, chicken, fish, uh, typically are com what we call complete protein. So they have all the, all the essential amino acids that our bodies can't make. Um, and one of the arguments against a whole food plant-based diet is, well, you know, you can't get complete proteins. But... That's just, in fact, not true. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there are lots of, um, uh, there, are, there are many plant-based sources of complete protein, soybeans, many of the legumes are complete. The other thing is, is we, you know, we, when we eat a whole food, healthy diet, and we get a wide variety of food, we're going to get all the protein that we need. This idea that we need to mix and match proteins um, um, to, to complete our protein, kind of the complement of amino acids we have, just, just isn't true. Right. So you can eat, you know, three of the essential amino acids with breakfast. You get the rest with lunch. You put it together. Right. You're just as well. I mean, right? it's, yeah, and you don't even need to worry about it. Right. Again, I mean, it's not something that you really even need to think about. Um, we, when we eat a whole food plant based diet, it's, as long as you get enough calories, mm -hmm. it is impossible. And this has been this is borne out by research. It is impossible. To, to become deficient in an individual amino acid. Is that right? It is. Impossible. Impossible. All right. Well, hypothetically speaking, if a person eats the same food, just one food, but they're getting their 2,000 calories every day, it is not a complete protein. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Well, then, you know, there, there, there are some proteins that we can't make, and so we do need to eat. We need do need to be sure we're getting enough protein. But right. the point is, it, again, that's why I said you have to get enough calories. Right. As long as you're getting enough calories, uh, there's there's not an issue. That's, that's incredible to me. Now, here's the thing why I really wanted to have you on. Of course, you, you're more than capable of explaining what the protein is, how it helps, and et cetera, et cetera. But you have a background working with athletes. Right. You were just in the documentary Game Changers, right. big, big in the plant-based world. Um, and more and more, we're seeing athletes come out and they say, hey, we can do this with the plant-based diet. And there was a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger, right. of all people. He said, quote, 
when it comes to protein, you can get it through vegetables. If you're a vegetarian, I have seen many body bodybuilders that are vegetarian and they get strong and healthy. That's a heck of a quote coming yeah, from yeah. the ultimate bodybuilder. Yeah. So I had the pleasure of meeting Patrick Baboumian, who's um, a, a German strongman and actually holds the world record for the most weight ever carried by a human being. Mm. Uh, he carried it on a yoke. A yoke lift is this contraption you, you carry and it's got uh, they put weight on it and you carry it 10 or 15 meters he carried 1250 pounds and um he's in the movie and, and i got to hang out with him um, um at the world premiere out at sundance this year and 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 he said that you know once a, a reporter asked him said patrick uh, you're strong as an ox and he said well have you ever seen what an ox eats um <laughs> because I, I think this idea again that that we have to eat meat is just a complete fallacy i mean the protein when we you know when we eat that big steak mm -hmm. right to get our protein where did the protein come from grass, the, the grass but, right yeah. the plants right you know you don't turn on national geographic it's a special on mountain gorillas or or, or 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 elephants and the first thing that pops in your mind is oh my god where do you get their their protein right and they are they are um, um, they are herbivores. They right. just eat. They just eat um, uh, plants, and and you know every day you hear about another athlete who's gone plant based, and and again the the thing I try to emphasize to patients um, and even you know my and even people amateur uh, athletes. Uh, in many ways, we're all athletes, right? Sure. I mean, every time you climb a set of stairs, you're performing. An, it's an athletic performance. Where's my gold medal, Jim? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so. Um, um, is that the idea that we need to get extra protein is also a fallacy, right? Because there are there are adverse consequences for the overconsumption of protein. Um, we it can increase your risk for heart disease, diabetes, uh, certain cancers. Uh, it may actually increase your risk for osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, the the idea is this: when we, if you're training for a mar, so if you if you're if you're just eating kind of a normal average, say two thousand calories a day, um, plant based diet provides you about fifteen percent protein. So right. if you do the math backwards, there's about four grams per calorie, four calories per gram of protein. So if you take fifteen percent of the two thousand and work out how many grams that is for the average size individual that's right around one gram per kilogram which right. is a, the rda recommended daily allowance is about 0 0.8 now athletes do need a little bit more not a ton endurance athletes maybe need 1.2 to 1.6 a strength trained athlete may need 1.5 to 2 somewhere in that mm -hmm. range but if you're training for a marathon or you're an olympic bodybuilder i mean you're an olympic uh, uh, weightlifter or you're, you're a bodybuilder guess what you're not eating 2,000 calories you might be eating 4,000 calories. So guess what happens to your protein intake Automatically if you double your calories? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's not it's not protein per se we have to worry about as an athlete. It's calories. And as long as you get enough calories, you're going to get enough protein. And I can't emphasize that enough. And now a little homework. Be sure to like the video below and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications and then head over to iTunes and Spotify. Subscribe to the full podcast, The Exam Room, brought to you by the Physicians Committee.